It was three years ago this week that a phone call at 3 a.m. changed everything. Not just for me, but it changed the lives of all of the people you see here today. Today, a very special edition of the Meaningful Meeting. It's me, my wife, Amanda, baby Dax, Peyton's brother, Cade, and we'll discuss where we've been, where we're going, and how we're doing with the death of my daughter, and most importantly, what we can all learn from this. So let's start the meeting. Whatever you're going through, you will get through it because you're here, and that means you are not alone. This is The Meaningful Meeting. Now your host, Ace Cannon. It's hard to believe it's been three weeks already. Three, three years. years. But three Saturday will be three years um, since the death of my daughter Peyton in a car wreck. She had just turned 21. She'd been 21 for three weeks, essentially. And um, the phone call came at 3 a.m. I don't remember. Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning? Tuesday night. Or I guess yeah, Wednesday morning. Phone call yeah. came in on a Wednesday morning. It felt like morning. Tuesday night yeah. is what I've always identified. So this week for the meaningful meeting, I wanted to do something uh, special, but not just for me to talk about Peyton and her death and that kind of stuff. And so uh, I was talking to Amanda and came up with the idea that we should do this as kind of a group effort. So my wife Amanda's here, Peyton's brother Kate is here, and the back of baby Dax's head. <laughs> so he will not sit down without yeah, crying. This right is now. the first time he's been here in this studio. So it's kind of cool and, and a unique thing for him to be here today as we talk about this, even though obviously he has no idea uh, what's going on. So give you a little idea in case you're not familiar with the story. Um, like I said, I was awake. It was three o'clock in the morning. We were coming through the summer of COVID and all that insanity that was going on. Amanda and I were about six months away from being married. Peyton was to be the maid of honor in our wedding in Jamaica. Cade was my best man. And um, a phone call came to me at about 3.03. I think it was 3.03. I looked down and saw my phone ringing. And it was Peyton and Cade's mom calling. And I thought, well, that's very unusual and i answered the phone and that's how i got the news that peyton had been in a car crash just after midnight and had died and obviously you know everything changed for all of us at that point and we've tried to do some positive things we've probably done some things that didn't pan out so well but today just kind of where we are how we got here and where we're going uh with with everything i'm curious as as we start, Amanda's the one that kind of came in from the outside. So what were your first impressions of, of, of Peyton? And then how do you think you got to be, being so close so fast? Because it didn't take long that you and Peyton really became friends. So my first impressions are what I thought. I mean, I didn't know her. So yeah. I thought she was going to be slightly intimidating. Like, cause she's just very outgoing and very outspoken. So if she didn't like me or didn't like our relationship or thought something was wrong with, you know, the two of us, yeah. she was definitely going to express it. So um, initially I found her intimidating um, and definitely a daddy's girl from the outside looking in, which isn't a bad thing. She definitely ended up being exactly that. And she definitely ended up being outgoing, but not not in a negative way like I thought I would have experienced. So and then I think we became so close so quickly because she was struggling with things before she passed and I just tried to be there as a friend and not as a mother like I tried to be like my stepdad was to me and just send her like positive quotes every morning and encourage her um, and not pester her, which Kate probably feels like I pester him. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I just tried to really like be there for her, not in an overbearing way while she was going through a lot. So I think that brought us together. I was just doing the math in my head and it was really just over two years was all that you knew her. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you met her in, I knew what, of her for yeah. three years, yeah. but I never actually, but you didn't. Her. So I, Amanda and I have been going out for a year, right about a year before she met Peyton and Kate. She met Kate first. We all went to the race together that day and then met Peyton shortly thereafter. Did you and Peyton have a conversation after we all went to the race that day about Amanda? Off the top of my head, I don't think we did at okay. first. But then, like, I think a few days later, she finally was like, how 
did it go? And yeah. I was like, it was one of those I didn't really care. Yeah. <laughs> I was more important there. She bought me ice cream. She was nice. <laughs> she was very nervous to ask me to take a picture of you two, which was, I think, my favorite moment. Yeah, I did not yeah. want to be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, Cade, how, if you can, how would you sum up what Peyton meant to you and how close you were to her? Definitely a big sister, but more of a best friend that I've ever had. We first, middle school was around the time we weren't close that much. We did things together, weren't close. It was really my opinion going in the freshman year when Payne got excited knowing I, she was taking me to my first day of high school yeah and that's really when we got close and we became doing like we'd go on late night drives together she would text me at midnight to go to cookout and we started doing all that stuff together so eventually it went from being just a big sister to like a best friend i had like anything with school or friends or anything like that she would i would be the person i would go to her for yeah um, and she would Help, help me through some things. But I think you were always close growing up. You, you oh. were, you were, you were close. But it, yeah, it wasn't until you, you started going to high school with her, her senior year, your freshman year. Because oh, yeah. I remember the first day of school, um, when she called me that afternoon, um, and before y'all came by the house, she called and she was. All she talked about was what it was like. She texted me that morning when she got to school, what it was like for you that first day. The questions you were just, and she said, I remember she was saying you would ask her things like, so this is what the high school kids do. <laughs> Y'all went to Dunkin' Donuts, and she was like, this is what the high school kids do. The high school kids go get donuts in the morning. found out how we would get, get to school faster by we would skip the light and do a U-turn QT and, the, and, and go to the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, we, we got kicked out doing that, and then we also did it at the church that was down the road, and eventually yep. they stopped us from doing that, so we just kind of got stuck. But that's one of the things that I, rem that I remember most about that day is that not really her talking about first day of her senior year, which is kind of what I wanted to know. Like, what was your first day of your senior year? Like, she had more fun telling me about what it was like with you and your experience and, and how that went. And then eventually she would just call me to tell me how aggravated she was that you would ignore her in the hallways <laughs> or just not take your earbuds out and just stick your fist up to, you know, dap her a little bit as she, she walked by. I forgot one of her friends asked if they knew, if she knew me. She was like, that's my brother. <laughs> yeah. So what was your, what would you say, Kate? What was your favorite thing about Peyton? Really? I don't really have like a favorite thing i think because i enjoy a lot of stuff she did i hate a ton of stuff she also did yeah. um i think it was more of in high school it was i start she had her friends that she would always call at midnight they would go hang out but then eventually during the school year i was the person that would get that or that text and we would just go hang out in the cookout parking lot and get food and that was like one of my favorite because i was like this is really like the first time we could start bonding more as a Aww. brother sibling other than being a kid and her being a teenager. Now we're both teenagers. I was 15. Actually, yeah. 15. And we would just hang out and talk about like how school and like, she would ask me what my friends are up to all that type of stuff. Yeah. But if you had to pick something about her personality, cause she was, it was definitely a personality. Yeah. It was her. I think it was her just being outgoing and always being there. Yeah. Aww. Because she'd be outgoing and invite you to do stuff. But also, like, she wanted to be the person. That, like, when I first went to my first party, there was no, oh, I want go dad to take me. No, she wanted to take yep. me. So I, she's the one who took me. <laughs> and she loved it every second. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I mean, distinctly remember that. Um I've told this story a hundred times, but when, <clears throat> when Cade was baptized, one of my favorite stories ever, uh, Cade was baptized and they were down in the water, um, <clears throat> and, uh, at the quarry. And while they were, they were down in the water, we were all seated and we didn't know, um, the pastor was explaining that if someone would like to come down and be there, for your loved one as they're, you know, going under being baptized, you're more than welcome to come out in the water. And I was sitting next to Peyton. Peyton was seated to my left. And I thought, 
oh, that's wonderful. I'm going to go do, share in this moment with, with Cade. And Peyton, that fast, turns to me and goes, I'm going to go. And I said, what? She goes, I'm going to go. I'm going to go down there. And I thought, I didn't say a word. I was like, that's couldn't be a more perfect thing to have happen. And so Peyton wanted to share in this life-changing moment with Kate. And I think that speaks to what, what you meant to her. Because that <clears throat> that's the most important decision in your life. And she wanted to be the one to welcome you, so to speak. And I've always thought that was a really defining moment as to how special she thinks you are and how and how much she wanted to be in your life and what she wanted to mean to you. And I've often told people, I wonder how our lives will be different. Amanda and I've talked about this a lot because I wonder how different your life would be were she alive today because nobody could get you Nobody could get a reaction out of you or light a fire under you like she could. Yeah. Because all the things that I say to you and, Kate, I'm aggravated. I need you to get up and do that and all that kind of stuff. And oh. she just uh, had an ability to do it because you would respond to her when you don't respond to me or your mom or Amanda. You didn't yeah, respond to any of us the same way. Your, yeah. She called me dish. out. Oh, no, she called me out. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so then we have a unique situation because now we have Dax mm -hmm. and Peyton would be 24 years older than that. Right at 24 <laughs> years. They were just, they would be a week apart. But she would be obsessed with him. I, I just know it. I think the same thing that she would be a hundred percent like all in all the time. Before we started this uh, podcast, Dax had a blowout yeah. TMI. <laughs> And I was like, hey, do you want to come in here and help me change his diaper? And he goes, no, thank you. And he's like not, he barely wants to hold Dax. He, I, I, Hopefully, he loves Dax, but he is not interested in him crying or his diaper changes. And I just feel like Peyton would just be all over him. Like, yeah. do you guys, do you and dad need a date night? Because I will totally come <laughs> and, like, take care of him. Or, like, or she would be there for Toby a lot, too. Yeah. Like, I know that she'd be like, is Toby getting the like, proper love that he needs? Because if not, I'll come over. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the, the last things that we did. Amanda and I were out of town right before, the week this before time, Peyton died. Right now. Yeah, and, um, and uh, Peyton was keeping Toby. And they, for a long time, there were about a six, eight months, about eight months maybe, that Amanda and Peyton and I all lived together. Mm -hmm. So Toby got to, like, stay with her. Yeah. And sleep in, because she, girl could sleep in. Um, and he would sleep in with her until, like, one o'clock in the it became a It became a regular thing of oh, when yeah. dad would go to work and you would yeah. go to work. He, Toby's like, all right, y'all gone. Toby I'll would go climb up three flights of <laughs> stairs to get to Peyton. Yeah, and, and he would wait outside the, the door. Floor. He'd whine and wait, and then eventually yeah. she would open it, and he was like, all right, now I'm here. She would wake up at some point, open the door. Toby would go in. He would jump up on the bed. She would let him under the covers, and they would go back to sleep together five days a week because um, Amanda and I both left for work at five o'clock in the morning. And, and that was a really, that's a really special. It was even then I realized how special that time was that Peyton lived there on the top floor. Amanda and I were on the second floor, the bottom floor was just, you know, the bottom floor and everything. Cade had a bedroom there and he was over all the time, you know, cause Peyton, Cade couldn't drive, went over to drive, but Peyton had her car and she'd go pick him up and all that kind of stuff. So there were, we had this, this, buzz of activity that seemed to always be around this townhouse uh, that I lived in at the time. And it was really looking back on it, a real special time. But I wonder, um, let's just kind of skip around different things, but I've thought a lot about how to involve Peyton or, or keep Peyton involved in Dax's life. Have y'all given that much thought? Like he's going to know Cade but he'll never have existed, not a day on this earth, with, with Peyton. So he won't have a chance to know her, you know? So I think it's important, and I'll go first if that's okay. That's fine. Um, I think it's important to me to not make it an ominous, depressing yeah. thing about his sister. I don't want him to feel like he has to walk on eggshells talking about it. I, I want to just speak of her as if I speak of Cade. So, like, every night... 
we, Dax and I say our prayers and we always pray for like mom and dad and our brother and our sister and our grandpa yeah. and grandpa. And so I just want to keep her in the daily conversation without it being an ordeal to bring her up. Right. Um, I also on uh, a more sad note, I do want to sit him down and explain what happened um, so that he is a very, very safe driver like Cade has become. Yeah. Cade is such a good driver, and that was my first stress, major stress, after Peyton passed away. I was even scared to drive. And then I thought, like, oh, my God, like, now all we have left is Cade. Like, he he can never drive. <laughs> but he, he does drive all the time, and he's actually a very good driver. So I almost... Speed that you need to go. There's nothing you need to get to there. You have to drive safely because yeah. it, you know it could change your life. Obviously, so I I want both of those things for Dax. I thought at some point when he's old enough, um, I would like to show him her funeral, like he can watch her funeral, mm -hmm. only because that way he understands what she meant to people, and that he in his own way has that shared experience that that we have you know what i mean i don't want to interrupt because yeah. i know we're, you're asking a specific question but just on the topic of her funeral um maybe one of the most proud moments i've ever been of being you know the you know the love of your life like i if you've never seen it, I don't, I mean, you don't have to go watch it, but you, it is online. You're able to watch it. And he was so nervous leading up to her eulogy and he absolutely crushed it. And then on that note, Cade blew it. Like maybe even, I expect a great speech from you. That's what you do for a living. You talk for a living. Not that I don't expect great speech from <laughs> <Yeah>. you, <laughs> but Kay totally blew me out of the water with what he said about his sister. He didn't trip up on a word. It didn't sound like it lingered too long. He, both of you guys should be so proud. And I know Peyton is proud of how you honored her in the eulogy because you guys both did a great job. Well, thank you. I'll never get doing that. That was the first time you ever spoke publicly, wasn't it, Kate? That plus it wasn't a planned thing. Yeah, that was the spur of the moment thing yeah, that Kate got up. That's what was most impressive about it. Because yeah. everyone had talked. Because he, he, I didn't know he. I thought he was only allowing like two people up, and then eventually he finally said, "If one more person wants to go, you can." No one moved, and it's one of those. I was like, I wasn't. I told mom straight. I even told you, I'm not gonna get up there. Yeah. The whole crowd went. Oh. Uh, like literally had it exactly what. Ace just did. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> breath was taken away when it Kate just, got yeah. up because we were not ready to like, you know, for our hearts to hit that dagger like that. We left so. it, um, we left it open for people to get up and share stories. Mm -hmm. We had let mm -hmm. a few people share stories, and um, when Pastor Jamie asked if there was anyone, like Kate stood up, and I just immediately went, <laughs> "Oh, like man." You know, and I had to, and I think I followed that, or no, it played the little video montage yeah. uh, right after that, which was a necessary break at that it point. It was just one of those, like, I wasn't wanting to speak. And then it was like one of those in the back of my head. I was like, if I don't, I will regret honestly that. regret it for the rest of my life. And I was yeah. like, I just got to do it. Didn't know what I was going to say. Start off one thing. And from then on, I was able to just start going through it. Yeah. But I want to, okay, so I want you to answer the question too. I don't mm -hmm. want us to skip over you. Back to what you. Well, I asked. forgot what the question. What was how so, Dax? Like, yeah, was how, yeah. How do you plan on like <laughs> helping Dax to remember or know who Payne? Knowing was? that even though I'm his older brother, there will always be. She won't be here in person, but she'll always be there watching over there. <laughs> is that he will know he had a older sister who's not here in person, but is gonna be with them always, and that you don't have to. Something I had to come to terms. I can't live up to her standards. But you can do things in life that is what she you, you would feel like she'd want to do. Okay, I love that. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so this being her third anniversary, um, this is something we've talked about before, and I don't know why it's never kind of panned out in the past. But Amanda had this idea, um, and among and, and I'll say this: I don't know in that time how I would have really gotten through 
all of this stuff without Amanda. Amanda was the one that told me, you don't have to call everybody. You need to get some rep. You need to handle these things. Then tell me what you need to do, what you want to do for these other things. It took such a tremendous load <laughs> off of me because not only was there a lot of grieving, but then there is a, if you've ever had someone close to you die like that, there was a lot of work that went into it because it was a unique situation because Peyton's funeral was here, but then she was being buried in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And obviously it wasn't expected for her to die at the age of 21. So there were some loose ends that we had never handled before mm -hmm. that had to all be caught up with and, and, and take care of. And it was, there were, a, there was a lot that had to be done. And I, I'll give you an example. Amanda was the one that said, what can I do to help facilitate Peyton being buried? And I gave her the name of the, uh, of the, the, uh, cemetery. Uh, cemetery. Thank you. I gave her the name of the cemetery and she handled everything else and I didn't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. She told me, here's what they're doing. Here's why they're doing it. And it was just such a tremendous, um, not just emotionally, but actually, you know, physically with the work that had to be done, I don't know how I could have done it without her because, you know, it was hard to do. We did the, we had that week, then there was a funeral. Then the next day, the very next day, we all had to get on a plane mm -hmm. and fly to Louisiana. And then, then the graveside service was the day after that. So it was just a, you know, it's almost like then you had to relive that again with family in Louisiana, you know, and then kind of mm -hmm. pull it all together and, and, and come back home. Uh, but this year for her anniversary, um, I just love you. You explain because you're the one that thought of this and, and, and that I think it's such a cool thing to do. So we obviously go to a gym that everyone knows about. Yeah. <laughs> Our good friend Jenny owns it. And she allows the local firefighters to come in and work out there for free because, you know, they're serving our community. And when we first moved up here after Peyton passed away, I was at the gym and there was this uh, firefighter named Marcus and he kept staring at me and he's like, hey, I just, you know, he basically came up to me and just said, like, I have been like thinking about your family and in he, without saying it, he indicated that he was one of the ones on the scene, if not taking care of her uh, through that process. And I, in that moment, I didn't want to dwell on it. I didn't want to talk about it a lot. So I just like thanked him, but he, we saw him again, like maybe six months ago out to eat. And I, I just like, it's been tugging on my heartstrings to like do something for the people who took care of her in a time, you know, at the end of her life. Um, Thankfully, none of the family had to be a part of that. So you have to think like these firefighters took that burden off of our shoulders and, you know, took care of her in her final moments. And I just felt like we should do something to show them that we love them and we appreciate them. And so, um, anyway, we ran into him out to eat and he was like, Hey, you know, I'm thinking about you guys. Like I was on the scene. And when we left the restaurant, I saw him crying to his wife, like, because of, you know, our loss and he had a daughter and this, you know, this was three years later that it still affects him like this. So, um, I think that firefighters go through a lot of things like that and they don't get the recognition or the love that they deserve. And, um, I just wanted to take the opportunity to do something to thank these guys like on, um, the anniversary, third year anniversary of her death. Um, and I think that's something she would appreciate too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that was just kind of my idea is like, we need to go take food and like desserts. And if we could bring beer, we would, but yeah. they, I don't think they can <laughs> right. drink on the job. So I think we're just going to go hang out with them at their station. And I think three of the five guys who were there on the scene that day with her are going to be at the fire station, specifically Marcus. So we're going to, we're going to go and spend the afternoon with them and show them love and, and, give them a very small token of food, yeah. you know, compared to what they did for us. So, yeah. Um, Kate, how do you feel you've handled your, because what the thing about the meaningful meeting is about, you know, moving forward. And I, I have pointed out many times that um, I like to say, we will move forward. We won't move on <clears throat> because um, moving on, 
to me means I'm moving on from this situation. Like you're leaving something behind. And we will, um, obviously we're not going to, we're not going to leave her behind. We're, we're going to move forward, taking her with us through everything in the rest of our lives. But how do you think you've handled your, your grief from everything? I don't know really i've tried my best but there are times that like either on her birthday or like my birthday or like big events i had like my graduation of course was just a few months after that those were the hardest to really like have to sit down and realize like these moments she looked forward to but never made it because it was it was hard for me to, to grieve at the very beginning because she died we did the we did the funeral, flew her out, buried her, flew back home, and not I want to say four days later I was in my bedroom starting my senior year of high school, and I had to just my mind kind of yeah switched. it wasn't it was, it was a couple of weeks just a couple of weeks and you and, and school I never, started I never really I feel like sat down really took the time to sit there because my mind went from straight from this is now it's t- been taken care of the funeral's done everything. Now I got to get ready for my senior high school, which yeah. I didn't know how it was going to go because I, all I knew was I'm stuck at home because of COVID. Yeah. But you're and, right. It wasn't, but just a few days. Cause I remember it. And then like school started, I think really the first grieving moment I really was able to, to take was on her one year anniversary. I graduated high school. I was going to turn 19. And it was one of those, like it hit me hard then that like, this is finally like it's, I can actually sit down, think about it, and actually work kind of through it. And I've gotten, I want to say good at it, but, like, I haven't fully worked past it. Yeah, no. I, um, <clears throat> gosh, I, um, I think about that, your graduation, because one of the things we used to laugh at her about was the fact that, when we discussed Cade graduating, it was so funny because she couldn't discuss it. She would say, don't, like, don't talk about it. it, makes me tear up. And we were talking to her about the day that, <clears throat> when um, Cade was gonna come home, uh, um, like, well, wait till Cade brings that, uh, that cap and gown home. And she would just be like, oh, dad, stop. I can't talk about it. She physically, could not talk about K graduating high school without tearing up. And it was, and then she would laugh about it. Like, how stupid is this that I can't even talk about him graduating without tearing up? But I remember that was a, um, that was a big thing that day in my mind that I thought about. Um, she also teared up anytime we talked about me turning 18. Yep. That was another one. Um, what do you think about your, cause your, your grief is, is different in many ways, Amanda, because you've also had to help kind of help me manipulate all of this stuff that's been going on. Yeah. I think a majority of my grief is you (laughs) is, um, navigating your grief, um, and our relationship from that. Um, but before I dive into that, my grief with Peyton, yeah, yes, I only had a relationship with her for two years, but I, I think what's hardest about that is grieving what could have been. Yeah. So she should have been my maid of honor. We should have been in each other's lives. I should have been helping her with more jobs, you know, like navigating that career yeah. world. And then like her next boyfriend and like her being a big sister to Dax and, and all the things that should have been. And our relationship was so good. Imagine how could it good, much better it would have been. So I think that's my grief. And then the biggest part is, I mean, watching you, um, you know, <laughs> half I I hate to say it like this, but half rot away sometimes. I mean, you are, it is, it is absolutely heartbreaking to watch you, um, what you show me. I mean, that's only what you show me. Imagine what you don't show me. And it is hard to love somebody who, if you didn't have Cade and I, and now Dax, you would not even exist. I mean, you would just, 
be a complete empty shell. Um, and I think the, you don't even go on for yourself. You go on for me and Cade and for Dax. And um, it, it is very difficult to help you to be, to do the best that I can to help you continue to live on. Um, Cause you always say that, this is what Peyton would want. She wouldn't want you to be sad and these yeah. things, but that's easier said than done. And I think that you've proven that to yourself, that it is very difficult to continue on. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of times I feel like a total fraud um, because I try to do all these positive things um, and I try to you know, carry her name on through Peyton's promise and like the bike ride and all that stuff, these big things. And people are saying so many, uh, people have said so many nice things to me about it. I don't know how you're this strong or how you're able to do the eulogy or how you're able to, to continue to do things positively in, in her name, but you're so strong. You're so strong. And I'm, I'm not that strong. I feel like a complete fraud because it, uh, uh, sometimes it becomes way too much. And I had to take a week off from work, um, a little over a year ago, probably a year and mm -hmm. three or four months ago, just because I wasn't handling it very well. Mm -hmm. And I have a bad habit of when I've been through something difficult and emotional of diving right back into life, normal life, too fast. Mm -hmm. um, there are about three occasions in my life that I should have taken some time just to, just to take a deep breath and allow myself to sort out what I had been through and move forward. Uh, all of them are very traumatic experiences. And in this case, it was one of those cases. Mm -hmm. I should have taken a little more time to prepare myself and and done a better job. And, I, and it makes me feel like a complete, I don't know. There are a lot of times that I feel guilty for all the nice things people have said to me um, because I don't think I'm deserving of, you know, I was going to say exactly to what you're saying. He always, that's maybe the hardest part is he should have, would have, could have himself. He blames himself. What could he have done differently to have changed that night with Peyton? And, and you maybe have heard the story. She had dinner with us. Then she went to go see her mom and her brother. Then she went to go hang out with friends. And so there's, there's absolutely nothing we could have done differently and he blames himself like we could have some done something differently that night and he blames himself for not being a good dad and and if you could have only seen in person how much Peyton loved her dad it's absolutely ridiculous and she would be quite frankly pissed off at her dad if she were here and heard him talk about how bad how much better of a dad he could have been to her because to her and I think to Cade, he he is the best dad ever. I mean, and I I don't think you're doing yourself any yourself any favors, blaming yourself for that, and that's difficult too. Yeah. So, thank you. Um, <laughs> I will. People ask a lot of times about, you know, what do you do in these situations? And sadly, I've had two other people that I know since then deal with the death of a child and they ask me and they, they both come to me and say like what you know what would you recommend what do i look forward to all this kind of stuff and 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 one of the things i recommend is something that amanda told me here's what you should do and this is something i would recommend here you explain what happened uh, with going to see her that morning at the funeral home oh um, so like Ace was saying, he very much so like went into, let me take care of everybody else mode. So when she passed away, he took on the responsibility of texting everyone personally and telling them. And it's just like, you don't have to do that. Then when it came time to her wake and her viewing, um, it, you know, her mom wanted to see her and spend time with her, her grandma, her brother, her friends, everyone wanted, you know, because there was an open casket and he was allowing time for everyone to go spend one-on-one -on -one time with Peyton, except for himself. And I'm like, we're early birds. This is the last day of the, the wake and viewing and the funeral before we go bury her. I said, we're going to get there early. I'm, we're going to go in there. I'm going to tell them not to let anyone in the room. I'm going to shut you in the room and you're going to spend one-on-one -on -one time with her. If, if you sit there and you 
want to talk to her, if you want to sit there in silence, if you want to sit there and pray, whatever it is, you need to allow yourself the time to spend with her because, you know, quite literally the casket will close and we'll, yeah. we'll never see her again. And, um, I think that it was really important that yes, you can, it's important for everyone else to be taken care of. But sometimes like in that situation, like you have to take care of yourself. Like that was your baby girl. Like you had a relationship with her, like put that, put that as a priority as much yeah. as you're putting everybody else as one. And so I think it was really special that you got that one-on-one -on -one time with her one last time. Yeah. It was the best thing ever. And it was this from someone who watched it. It's maybe the saddest thing I've ever seen in my whole life was watching you uh, talk to your baby girl and you know, and she's not yeah. really there. She's not even really there. I mean, her body was there, but watching you just like hurt well, more than I've seen anything in my life. But I couldn't imagine. I'll tell people um, at the end of that conversation, because it's hard to wrap that conversation up because, you know, that's the last time that's ever going to happen. But uh, at the end of that conversation, I did something that I thought she would find funny. I got to the end and I told her, I said, hey, look, you know, I've worked really hard on this eulogy and I've got, I think it's really good. I said, and I want to do right by you today. And I, uh, I just, I told her, I said, Hey, I've got some good material here. So if you'll just help me get through this, we will burn this bitch down and these people will love it. And that would have made her laugh. And uh, that was the, that was, you know, the, yeah. I mean, I tell people all the time, like, you know, don't, don't let that moment go by in your life because she walked out of our apartment that night, headed up to see her, Kate and her mom. And it was, we'd had dinner and it was, you know, see you tomorrow. And I, you know, I got you first, got you last. And I said, I'll see you tomorrow. She goes, okay. Cause she lived six blocks away from us uptown. And that was it. Never, you know, we never had the chance to, to talk to her again after that. So, and that can, I, I think just because it's the meaningful meeting, like maybe if you take anything out of this, like it can happen to anyone at any time. I never thought in a million years that when she walked out that door, that would be the last time that we saw her. Never gave but it a guess thought. what? It, it was, and it could be for yeah. somebody else who's listening to this. And, you know, regardless of your relationship with, with people, I, life is just, I know it's so cliche, but life is just so short and it's too short not to, you know, love and forgive is, is my opinion. Kate, I'll tell you something that you don't know. <clears throat> Last night, Kate drove to Greensboro to see NF Ugh. hour and 20 minute drive for you. I think, I believe so. Yeah. But he's a good driver, guys. He's a great driver. <laughs> Kate's a great driver. But last night, Amanda goes, it's you, like, you seem uptight. What's, what's wrong? And I said, I just am scared to death tonight. I'm, I don't know why. You've driven all over the place. You, you, you've driven to the beach. You've driven out. You know, you, you're an excellent driver. Just something about last night. I made me real uptight because it's the Monday of this week, knowing you were driving back late at night. And I sometimes I uh, <clears throat> I think um, sometimes God and I haven't been on the best terms over the course of the past few years, and that's on me. But uh, this morning I was up feeding Dax, and he had dozed off, and I had him in my arm. And I may be exaggerating things, whatever. I'm holding Dax in my left arm and I had reached out and picked up my phone. Literally, I was holding my phone and thought, I'm going to text Cade real quick and see if he's made it back. And Cade sent me a text. Mm -hmm. Hey, just pulled into the house, made it home. Thank you again for setting me up with the tickets. We had a really great time. And it's like, you know, in that little moment, there was, there was Dax and there was you and it was like, whew, everybody's okay. It was just really not freaked out, but just really on edge last night, worried about you. Um, but I wanted to ask you, okay, do you think there's anything after her death now? Do you think that that is, uh, do you think her death is holding you back from doing anything? I want to say a little, because there was so many like memories I'd like looked for the making with her that I never got to. That yeah. was so close, like turning 18 
graduating and then I'll be 21 here in six weeks. And that was yeah. a huge one I was thinking of. And that just being ripped away out of nowhere really hit. And like all the ideas of concerts to go with her, because that was a big thing about last night for me. That is That was my first concert I've been to since my freshman year with Peyton at Travis Scott. Really? I haven't gone to any except that one. I, and I hate I saying not, it. I, I told Amanda last night. I said some. I said I don't. I don't want to read too much into it. But you texted me three times last night. How much you appreciated me getting you set up to get those tickets? That it meant a lot to you. And I wondered if that had. I didn't put that together though. That's the first because it was COVID and all that stuff. That was the first concert you've been to. I went to two concerts freshman year. Travis Scott was with Peyton and uh, Skylar, a bunch of our other yeah. friends. That was a huge one because it was one lot like a really big concert. Like that was my yeah. first big one. But that summer leading into my freshman year, I saw Logic at the the Fillmore. Well. NF was the opening act at that time, yeah. and he wasn't as big as he is now. And Peyton took me to that one, so that was a huge thing. I remember, but I remember because she and she asked, she was, "Hey, I'll take him to that show. Let me take him to that show," because I was going to do it. And she was like, "I'll, I'll take him." And she volunteered. She was like, "It'll be much cooler if I take him instead of you." And I was like, "Well, that hurt a little bit." <laughs> it yeah. was also a big one because it was the thought of this is my first concert since she died. But it was also my first concert since I was supposed to go see Post Malone. I should have. But yeah. my grades at the time stopped me from going <laughs> to see him. Which, at the time, I didn't know it, but was also a, kind of a blessing. Because I eventually, not mean to, get Peyton her last concert. Yeah. Because Post Malone was her last one ever. Yeah. She and Skylar went and got your tickets to, the, to go see Post Thought Malone. Thought they ran out a whole house. Yeah. And actually went out a room. Um. But look, I I've told you before, you know you can't um, you can't let that hold you back, because the number of times that uh, the number of times that Amanda and I have said, hey, boy, if Peyton was here, damn it, she'd get in Kate's ass on this, and we, we'd get a light <laughs> of fire under him, you know, because she listens to. What do you think it is? What is it that's holding you back? I don't really know. It's it's like a it's weird to me. Because every time I think back on it, it was, it wasn't like one of those, oh, Peyton died, we did the funeral, and I could just kind of go out, hang out with friends that could help me. We were all still stuck at home because we still had the stay-at-home thing going on yeah, with it was COVID. Yeah, it's still COVID. It was, it was the that big summer where nothing was going, there was no, that's the only summer since Cade was six that we didn't go on a baseball trip because there were, there were no, they wouldn't allow fans at the games and everything. It's crazy to think like Peyton never saw the other side of COVID. Yeah. That, like that, it doesn't even seem like that's a thing. But in a weird way, um, obviously we would rather have all not been through that. But <clears throat> that summer, Peyton lived, um, Peyton lived very close to me, to me and Amanda. We were all, we were living uptown and it was a real unique situation because you couldn't go and do a lot of things. So Peyton would come over and just hang out a lot. And we got a chance just to hang out. And she would go get Cade and they would come over and just hang. And because there wasn't anywhere to go or do or there was no concerts to go to. Or that stuff. So it offered a really a time for us all to just spend a lot of just time together. Um, and that's one of the things I would tell people is that, hey, you know, never... Never um, forget how important it is. You don't have to have a reason. Just spend time with people. You know, just those people that you care about. Always tell them you love them. Always. Um, and I, Always watch their TikToks when they want you to watch their TikToks. <laughs> Always. <laughs> um, and I think about that all the time. Peyton, TikTok was just becoming a thing then. And... Uh, the first TikTok I was ever in was this dance TikTok with Peyton that's, you know, been on my social media now for a while that she was like, Dad, would you do that? Do this with Savage. me. Yeah. And uh, and I was like, OK, let's we, and we spent an evening learning this this TikTok dance. And and a little insight. We're learning the dance on the balcony at our apartment in uptown Charlotte. And Amanda keeps saying things like, no, you're not you're not doing that right. And Peyton. And if you could have been there, you would have seen 
Peyton going, yeah, look, hey, you got it. Just relax. You got it. It's just got to turn this way a little bit. And the difference between how the two of them were handling the situation. She's like, you're about to piss my dad off. <laughs> she clearly knew that that's not what I needed. I didn't need that kind of direction. Uh, I needed another kind of direction. Um, but that's the thing that I was, and, and never, you know, never, um, never be shy about telling people that you love them. And that's something I learned as a kid. And really, uh, my mom and dad, although they were divorced, were, that was very important to them. Like, I, I, you know, and I grew up, I was a, my parents were divorced. It was in the 70s. I know, a long time ago. Uh, but my dad, even though you know, a lot of guys wouldn't say, my dad never, never had a problem in front of my friends or his friends or other people telling me that he loved me or anything like that. So um, I would hope, Cade, that you would not, not let that hold you back, that you would want to, you know, do things, um, because of her, for her, you know, anything, something. <laughs> <laughs> um, any last, any last thoughts? Because, Cade, you're a more thoughtful person than you let on sometimes. <laughs> um, what is there anything that you think it's important for people to know, whether it's about Peyton or about handling grief or any of that kind of stuff? Don't try handling it alone. It never goes well. I tried that at the very beginning, just when, with mom, you. I just said, I, it was one of those, like you said, like Amanda said, when you were texting everyone to just let people know and you didn't really take a moment to just sit back. Yeah. With mom was how I, was one of those I had to, I chose to go into the, I have to be there for her and not really take a step back. Yeah. And I just, because that night I will never forget the phone call being asked to come downstairs, how quiet the house was. And I hate even admitting it when she told me I didn't believe her because I've never, that house has never been that quiet. There's always been either the TV or something going yeah. on and having to give you a phone call thinking I'm about to, dad's going to pick up like, why are you up? And Amanda was the one to actually pick up the phone. And that's when like it hit me. And I, and then eventually when mom, I could tell mom was calling Mimi, I, her mother, I was like, this is what I got. I have to be there for mom. I didn't really, let myself sit back and just take a second. I went straight into the whole not can't look weak. Yeah. Can't lay it out. Just hold it and be there for everyone else instead of letting myself finally take it. And I think I've always said it, the moment I really I think lay it out was that Easter weekend of seeing it her gravesite done like the stone was there it was yeah. fully complete and that really was my and then when we were there last time just taking a second by myself was yeah. one that like it really helped me because i haven't other than that one time before the wake ended was really the last time i took a a moment by myself with her right and that's i have a picture amanda took of peyton's friends hung out and we all just kind of hugged each other right in front of her casket. And that's one of the best pictures I think I have. Yeah. That's the last one I ever took with her. And you always, I feel like you always, I know even if you, you might not be in the best of terms, like man said, but you always got to let people know you love them because I've always, my entire life, me and Payne always lived by got you last. We'll see you later. All that type yeah. of stuff. I've, I've told this to mom and my friends a hundred times that night was just different. When she went to go leave, I said, I love you. Goodbye. And that's where it left off. <laughs> not knowing the last text. I didn't know that. So and that the, was the last thing you ever said to her? Yeah. And the last text I ever received from her was both of us texting you, we got you last that night. Because she sent that to you, I think, at like 11. And yeah. that was it. <clears throat> yeah. So for anybody who doesn't know, I don't know why, but when they were kids, I started saying, I would say, like, in lieu of I love you, I, which I said I love you all the time to them, but I would say, got you first. And they would say, got you last. And, uh, yeah, so uh, we had a really good time with her that night. And when I went to bed, I uh, I sent a text message. To them both like I normally did and they uh and they both responded got you last and that was it so oh 
What do you think, baby? Anything that you yeah. think we haven't covered that people should know? <laughs> I think people should know that if you didn't know Peyton, go on our social media and take the time to look up pictures of her. Um, you know, if pictures could only do justice. I mean, she was beautiful, smart, driven, afraid of her own potential, afraid of her own future. Um, you know, she was coming into her own, like, you know, kind of yeah. standing in her own way a little bit. And she was just starting to like <clears throat> absolutely shine. She was outgoing. She had so many friends, her friend, look up her friends, social media, just look up pictures of Peyton and, and, um, just see how beautiful and fun and outgoing she was. Um, because I, I never want to forget that, that image of her. Um, and that's what I think people should know. I think people should um, know how amazing she was. And I also think that, you know, if you have a friend, be a good friend to that person. Don't let your friends do things that they shouldn't be doing. And, and just be a good friend because Peyton was a very good friend to all of her friends and all of her friends were good friends to yeah. her. And so um, I just think, you know, take the time to look her up on either Ace's sh social media or Cade's or mine or her friend's social media. She was stunning, beautiful and very outgoing. Yeah. Yes, she was. <laughs> so um, what about you, babe? What do you want to say about her on this third year anniversary? You got it, babe. I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, but <clears throat> there's so many things. I could talk to you for the next five hours about how, uh, how proud I am of her, and Kate, and Dax, and, <clears throat> and and how special she was, and how when she walked in the room, it just lit up, and uh, the way she would leave me little notes. Um, sometimes they were mean, but they would always say, like, love you, Dad, at the bottom. Um, the, the pranks that she would play, uh, just the silly things that we did, making videos, and Things like, you know, if you look at my social media, there's, you know, us, me teaching her the, the, uh, Prince, uh, I would die for you. I can't do it. <laughs> from Purple Rain. And can you do it, Kate? No. <laughs> just silly things like that. And the, the times we shared with music and concerts and, um, you know, all those things that made her really unique. But I'm most proud of <clears throat> those things like the way her friends, spoke of her and, and speak, of her. speak yeah. of her because like um, some of them referred to her as mom um, because of the way she would, uh, you know, offer advice. And I shared this story in her eulogy that she told me one day about a girl at school that had been through a rough time. And um, Peyton said, I didn't really know her, but I sought her out because I just felt like I should say something kind to her. And, they ended up, uh, I asked Peyton, I said, what did you do? She goes, I ended up asking her, said, hey, would you like to say a little prayer together? And that's one of those things that as a parent, like that's that's who you want your child to be. And uh, that's who she was. And yes, yeah, she was hard-headed and uh, she was just wonderful. Um, and if she'd been a little more careful, you know, we wouldn't even be here talking about this. We'd be talking about how great she is and the example that she's setting for everybody. Um, but that's just the way it's, it's just the way it is. There's and now we have the best change, you know. angel watching over all of us. <laughs> yeah. So, Can ask for a better one. Um, yeah. So there you go. It's... Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. You know. It never gets easier. It never gets easier. And it probably never will. Yeah. But we'll be here for you, baby. Yeah. Well, we'll all be here for each other. Yeah. You know. I don't know the last time you've been to a tree, 
but on our two year anniversary, I, I did it once. And it's now become a, a thing I've done annually. If you go to a tree, I've carved her initial in it. Yeah. Because I've started to think, well, as years go on, that tree will continue to grow. Yeah. And that thing will become invisible. But at one point, I want to make sure that sometime anyone past that tree will see that initial and anyone that knows the backstory of her yeah. would see it and know what that tree kind of means. We talked about that. Uh, a man and I stopped by on her birthday and left flowers there and talked about your where you, you carved that in. Oh, yeah. yeah. Plain as day. Um, just so you know, so that the story makes sense. Um, the, the tree that Peyton's car crashed into, they um, took that, cut that tree down that was there and then uh, put a new tree in. And every year, Cade goes and recarves her initials a little bit bigger into that into that tree as it grows to make certain that everybody knows that that's Peyton's tree. So, um, I will say thank you. If you're listening to this still after, I don't know, 45 minutes or so, thank you for um, being a member of this radio family because the support has been overwhelming. And that's part of the reason that we do the Meaningful Meeting is trying to find a way to, to help other people because of the help that you've given us um, through all of the stuff that we've been through uh, in the past few years. And we appreciate it very much. And I hope that somehow today um, something has helped you with this. You've gotten a little something out of it that's made you feel better or given you a little bit of hope or given you an idea of how to make your life better because that would, uh, that would make her really proud. And that would make me really proud. So we'll see you next time. Now, whatever you're going through, you're not alone. You are a part of the Meaningful Meeting, presented by the Radio Network. Copyright ATJ, Inc. 2022.